Introducing Recorded Content, a podcast for small, scrappy B2B marketing teams who want to get the most out of podcasting. In each episode, we capture stories from industry experts and podcasters. Listen in and uncover what it takes to launch, run, and grow a successful B2B podcast. Check out and subscribe to the show on Spotify, Apple, or wherever you listen to your favorite shows. Let's jump in. Hey, this is Tristan. I'm the co-founder of Motion and your host for this episode of Recorded Content. Recorded Content is brought to you by Motion, a done-for-you podcast agency for small, scrappy B2B tech marketers. At this point, most companies understand what a branded podcast is, and marketers are starting to learn how to use a podcast as a foundation for a lot of great content for both prospects and customers. But your normal, publicly accessible podcast is typically used as a way to grow your audience. But how can your business gain a competitive advantage with an internal podcast? Well, in this episode, I had the pleasure of bringing on Craig Hewitt. Craig is the founder of Castos, a podcast hosting platform that aims to make podcasting easy and accessible to all. And in our conversation, we uncover the difference between a public podcast and a private podcast and we discuss how a private podcast can help build a stronger workplace culture and perhaps bridge the gap between marketing and sales teams. So let's jump in. Craig, well, I, I was, uh, first of all, welcome to, to record a content. Can't forget that. Thanks for having me. Looking forward to it. All right. Well, well Craig, I was introduced to Castos probably a couple of years ago now. And, and what drew me to Castos was initially the, the WordPress plug-in functionality that, that allowed people uh, or provided people with an easy way to integrate their podcast episodes on their WordPress sites. But uh, I noticed recently that when I went to Castos, the the headline on the, on the homepage has changed quite a bit, right? So, um, and it's all about public podcasts and private podcasts. And that's really big and bold right now. So what made you decide as a company to, to start building features around private podcasting. Yeah, I think that uh, when when just when we look at the podcasting landscape, uh, the, the kind of the technology and the need that conventional podcast hosting solves has has kind of already been met, right? Um, and you know, our customers looking for uh, you know nice, easy to use and beautiful looking kind of platform for them to publish their podcast and manage it and, and show to their, to their listeners. Um, th there's, you know, it's something that will never be truly done with, but we felt like we got, we got most all of what we need to, to get done there. Um, and for a while we've been focused on kind of expanding the, the usefulness and the utility of the platform, uh, to, to other kind of tangentially related things. You mentioned like our WordPress plugin. And so we've always kind of had this integration mindset in mind, right? Like that's how mm -hmm. the whole platform started is I acquired the WordPress plugin. We built the Castos platform that hooked into that. And so Castos has always been kind of this tool that sits around other tools that you use for podcasting. Um, and so we have things like automatically publishing to YouTube, uh, automated transcriptions, integration with headliner, like this audiogram tool. Um, and we have a couple of other big integrations that, that we're either announcing really soon or, or working on. Um, and so kind of always had that as like, okay, you have a podcast hosting platform and it kind of sits at the center of your audio world, right? But you have all these other things that you do and they should all talk to Castos. Um, so, so that's kind of like how we've looked at the, the conventional podcasting realm. And then like the concept of private podcasting really kind of got into vogue about this time last year, right? With the pandemic, people saying, God, right. you know, have all this stuff I want to do with people and I can't see them in person. And so we saw the opportunity to say like, hey, you know, we do this. It's really easy. You can manage to to a really like a really fine grain level um, who has access to your content, and and turns out that has been really interesting for a lot of different kinds of applications and personas from from a business perspective. A lot that we didn't anticipate um, that are really fun to see. Um, a, a lot that we we kind of knew um, and are are really you know people are loving what we're what we're offering and, and it's like fulfilling a, a big need for them. So, uh, you know, the way we look at it is, is like the, the core of what we do hasn't changed, right? Conventional podcast hosting, WordPress integrations mm -hmm. around that. And we're kind of layering on top of that, this focus and the ability for folks to manage private podcasts on the platform. Got it. And, and Craig, so you mentioned last year, you know, with COVID, obviously that, that introduced a new dynamic 
for podcasts. So as you're developing these the, the private podcast layer to Castos, when, when did you say, all right, we're, we're actually going to make that a, a bold claim on our homepage and, and we're going to differentiate ourselves, right, from some of the other podcast hosting platforms? When did it feel right? What, what triggers maybe did you see from customers, uh, you know, kind of what, what led you to say, all right, that's what we're going to do on our homepage and, and you know, it's going to be part of our mission. Yeah. Yeah. I think that, you know, it's almost like a new product for us, right? It, it's like, a, a so it has some overlap with our existing audience, but, but to a fair extent, it's like a whole new audience. It is a whole new type of product, new messaging. And so I think anybody who has, you know, started a business or like pivoted into a new area knows yeah. that like, there's this degree of product market fit. Um, and it's, it's what the product does and, and how you speak with your potential customers and the language that they use. And when all of those start sounding the same and you feel like you have good congruency with those things, then you can feel confident to like enter a market. And, and that's where we got to be, um, you know, so like eight or nine months ago, I guess, when we changed the homepage to really uh, address head on like private podcasting is the thing that we're focused on. And so it was just like the product did what it needed to do to take care of customers that we're wanting to talk to. Um, our ability to like understand and address their needs was was really like met um, properly, I think. But then also we just kind of saw the shift in the in the market in general to to really have a lot of people focused on this. And um, and, and we just think it's it's like a lot of what the future of podcasting is going to be. And we want to position ourselves at the at the forefront of that. Yeah. And talking about that shift in the market and, and then also some of the language that you're using, I, I saw on the homepage as you drill into it, you're describing public podcasting as a way to grow your audience. And then on the flip side, private podcasting is a way to offer exclusive content. So can you talk about those, those two differences there? Yeah. Yeah, sure. I mean, you know, this podcast, uh, you know, my personal podcast, right, is a, a branding experience, right? Whether it's you personally or for your company, um, you know, for cast us, we have a podcast called audience. It's a podcast where we want people to come and learn and, and kind of get in, educated and inspired about podcasting. Um, and we want as many people to listen to that as we can, right? Because that is right. a helpful thing for our our kind of universe, but also hopefully kind of gain some brand equity for us as a company to where people say, hey, you know, Matt and Craig know what the heck they're talking about. And this is a useful tool for me. Um, on the flip side, we we have several private podcasts where... Um, for, for different reasons, we want to kind of gate that content, right? Like some of them are just members of our academy, right? Academy to cast, academy.castles.com, go. There's a whole bucket load of like free information there. But also when you join the academy, you get added to a private podcast, right? So it's information mm -hmm. that Matt shares, like current events in the podcasting space, new things that we're learning, um, like sneak peek at product releases, things like that. And then we have a, an internal company podcast, right? So I talk just to our team about things that are going on and things that are upcoming. And those are really sensitive topics, right? And I don't want everyone to hear those. And so that's where like you can use podcasting as a marketing tool to, to grow your brand. And then you can use private podcasting as, as a way to share information with just a select group of people. It's funny because like we use the word podcast because it's the thing that, that people understand, but, but it really is just like audio messaging, right? And we just use the, the, the medium of podcasting to share the information, but it really is like audio messaging um, is, is what we're doing. Cause it's a lot of times like not even in a conventional podcasting player um, with the way some of our, our customers are using it. Yeah. And it's funny you mentioned that that was a question I was going to ask later, but I, I think you're, you're going right into it, which is, um, and, and we have that same challenge too. And I know you're familiar with podcast post-production services. I mean, that's that's where you started in the space. It, and and what we do is we develop shows for tech companies, but but podcast is a word that that people are familiar with, but it it really goes beyond just audio content and you know, it goes into video. There's there's written pieces that get developed out of it. So you know, based on what you're seeing, what what do you consider a podcast? to be today like help help me out there what, yeah. what does this word mean yeah it's a it's it's a blurry line to to in some use cases i think and then it's just going to get worse um if you if you think it's bad but um i think the easiest definition would be um content that's delivered by an rss feed that is usually audio and sometimes video 
Got it. And that leads me to my next question because someone asked me actually on LinkedIn when I, I started to go down this private podcasting route because we've had a lot of customers just ask us, hey, what what is the private podcasting thing that I'm that I'm seeing a little bit here and there? How does that work? And and we know a little bit about it. We we have a general sense of how it's working, but you know, for our audience and our customers, it's still very much a, a brand new concept. Can can you walk us through how that works in the context of an RSS feed that's public versus how that works on the private side? Like, what are the mechanics of that? Yeah, for sure, for sure. So, um, you know, a kind of kind of just going back to how conventional podcasting works, right? You have an RSS feed that's usually generated by your hosting provider, and that is the thing, right? In air quotes, that places like Apple Podcasts and Spotify, Amazon Music, Google read to show information about your podcast as a whole. And then every time you publish a new episode, it gets appended to this RSS feed and shows information about like, hey, episode 27, here's the title, here's the description, here's the audio file. Um, And there's one feed that all of these places read to show information about it. And it's totally public and everyone should, right? Have access to it because we want as many people to listen as possible. A private podcast with us at least is where you have this, um, this kind of this podcast, right? This kind of bucket of content. And then you're able to add people individually for us, it's name and email address. I think in the future we'll use mobile phone numbers too, uh, to invite people via SMS to, to get an individualized, um, experience of this content with a unique feed URL that is just for them. And so think about like, there's a couple of applications for this. One is we call it the maker community, right? People with online courses and communities, um, membership sites, right? Uh, Mm -hmm. That want to have content to share just with their members. Um, So think about like the flow would be, okay, someone comes and signs up for your course. You have it hooked up with Zapier to Castos to where when they join Teachable, it shoots over the email address. To cast us, that person's added to your private podcast. They get an email address, email from us saying, hey, you've been added to Tristan's private podcast. Here's the unique feed URL just for you. And then that person says like, I don't want to do this anymore. I'm going to cancel and get my refund, right? And then yep. Teachable would then send something through Zapier, right? Or we have an API to say, hey, okay, you know, Bob isn't a member anymore. He doesn't get that content anymore. And so they're kind of cut off. Right. And that's, that's the real difference between like conventional podcasting and private podcasting. The, the way we do it at least is you can add people and you can take them off of a private podcast to where they can and can't get that information. Whereas everyone sharing a global, you know, feed is there, there's no way to kind of turn that on and off for individual people. So we have like a little mini CRM, built into our, our dashboard to where you can add and remove people, revoke them, add them to multiple podcasts. Um, and even like, you know, Hey, you're joining Castos and you have a group of like 500 people in your community. You know, we can upload that as a CSV for you to add a whole bunch of people at once. Um, and then as they leave, you can either manually go kind of revoke their access, or if mm-hmm. you have it hooked up again through Zapier or API, that can all be automated through whatever tool you're using to manage like the member aspect of things. And, and Craig, what's the advantage of having the content through the RSS feed structure? So like, let's say you do have a community and you have like this private area where you have content that's available and it's secure in that way. Is the advantage <clears throat> giving people access on their phone so that they can listen to in, in that player that they're comfortable using or, or how how do you think that that fits well? Yeah. Yeah, that's a really good question. And and this is a term that that we hear over and over and over again, like we're talking about that, like product market fit and that messaging consistency Mm -hmm. from customers is we hear our customers saying, uh, especially for like on the corporate side, because we do private podcasts for companies wanting to share information internally with their teams. And the term they use is like the step away experience, right? I want my employees to not have to be on another freaking Zoom call or to read another yeah. eight page memo or a blog post or attend a webinar or live stream or whatever garbage that we're all doing. I want them to be able to consume this piece of content that audio is the right medium for this piece of content that we want to create, right? Because that's not always the case, right? Like there are things where video is absolutely the way that you should do this. There are things where written content, whether it's an internal blog post or an email or a memo or whatever Mm -hmm. is absolutely the right thing to do. But there's a lot that you can say like, Hey, 
when you're walking the dog or when you're working out or some people are commuting again, you can tune into this and catch up on, on this bit. Um, you, you know, an audio asynchronous mobile first is the way that you can consume this. And so they're just giving their employees the, the ability to consume content, like the right piece of content in the right format in the right way. Um, and I think for a long time, people have just not people, and I talk about like mostly companies, um, but yeah. also like this maker community have just not have the ability to do that, right? You're, you know, we're on Teachable, you got to log into Teachable and sit at your computer <laughs> to consume this content or you're an employee and you got to be on WebEx or you got to read this memo when you're like VPN into your computer and that's just a drag and that's not the way that we live these days. And so I think yeah. we're just opening that up for folks. Yeah, and a lot of those platforms, the, the mobile version of that experience is not great either. And, and I feel like people are so used to, if you're into podcasting and you, and you like that format, people are very used to just consuming, you know, here's my player and I have my own player, whether it's Pocket Cast or, or if I am using Spotify or whatever, I'm very familiar with it. I have my playlist and, and I'm comfortable there. And I even heard someone describe uh, the private podcasting for companies as a way to share information without taking time away from people like you can do the dishes as yeah. you're listening to that that meeting update and you're not like robbing someone of of more time where they have to sit in front of a computer and 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 waste time so to speak so you can kind of do that along with some of your other activities like you mentioned uh so craig let's shift to how companies can can use private podcasting i, I know you mentioned the maker community uh, seems like a, a very good use case, obviously, because a lot of this just isn't available to the maker community, right? And it's a way for them to monetize their content. But when we look at a company, let's say a B2B company, which is traditionally who we work with, B2B technology companies, what's a good use case for them to offer private content in the way of a, a podcast like this? So, so you're talking about uh, for them internally with their teams, with their employees? That's right. Yeah. And, yeah. I, and I guess there are some external ways too to, to enrich the customer experience. But let, let's start with the internal aspect yeah. Yeah. Um, for morale and, and things like that. What are some good use cases? Yeah, absolutely. So so I think the the interesting thing that, that we've seen is, um, I think, first of all, this is a really new thing, right? The fact that like yeah. we're doing a podcast and, and explaining what this is, it's not like, hey, we need a VPN provider and it's either you know, Express or Nord or whatever, and you just go pick it and it's, it's you know, rather commoditized. This is a concept that like the hip companies are just getting and, and the rest of the companies are are, are kind of um, like not even aware of that, that like this is a problem and there's a solution for this. So I think that's like a good thing to point out is like if companies are listening to this or saying, oh crap, we're not, <laughs> we're not doing this already. Don't yeah. feel bad. Like we're talking with a lot of leading edge companies that are just getting into this. And just getting into it at, at certain divisional and group levels. Um, and, but what we're seeing is that it starts with, say, the sales team, or it starts with like C-suite kind of leadership, and then it expands out from there. Um, but the handful of use cases that that we see kind of over and over again are um, like continuing education as an application. So you're a financial services company, and you have a bunch of advisors that are all over wherever. Uh, and they constantly need new information about new products and new ways to sell things and new ways to manage clients. Um, again, like the web version of this is garbage, right? There's a bunch of yeah. information that can be relayed via audio, asynchronously, mobile first and on demand. Uh, and th that's a great application for podcasting. The other one that, that really rings home true to me is like my former life. I was in field sales in the medical device industry. Um, mm -hmm. And I would have killed <laughs> for this kind of content. Like, hey, bring on like the the stud salesperson uh, for the company and talk to them once a month about what they're doing to, to see success, right? Like that is an invaluable piece of content that you can share super easily with your entire, you know, hundreds of people uh, sales organization. Um, you can also like bring in marketing and talk about a new initiative, talk and bring in product to train on a new thing. Um, so really like sales enablement information uh, to help sales teams operate better. Um, we've seen a lot around diversity and inclusion as well, um, kind mm -hmm. of from from HR teams and, and communication teams internally talking about initiatives that are that are happening within companies that they want to share with people. Um, and then, you know, one that that I think maybe is the first one that people think about, but is really pretty popular is like C-suite messaging. Um, yeah. and we're a team of 13 people, but that's how we use it <laughs> currently is okay. uh, 
Uh, it's most of the time just me talking, um, but about things that, again, I don't want to take up people's time during a meeting. Um, it's things that there could be dialogue around. Um, and and we use, actually use Slack to do that kind of asynchronously afterwards. So I have a podcast episode that I do internally for us. There's something that people want to talk about, you know, around that. And then they, you know, start a thread in a Slack channel we have just for our own podcast. Um, but, but I think like C-suite messaging uh, around... Yeah, motivation, new initiatives, you know, recapping an investor update, things like that are, are all really valid ways that people can think about this. Um, and then I would just add that like, we are hearing new ways that people want to use this almost every week. And so mm -hmm. I, I would just kind of add the caveat of saying like, if there's a way you want to communicate with your, your team um, and, and a thing you want to talk to them about, like there's not a wrong answer here, right? It's like, hey, we have a use case and a situation where our team needs this information or needs to be updated about a thing. If audio is the right medium for it, then, and then it fits in this box really well. Yeah. And that's interesting too, just in your internal use case, right? With a team of 13 people. And, and I can see how that applies. I mean, our team is very similar in that size where not everything can be done with a loom video. I mean, sometimes there just isn't much to show and it's just like my head in the bottom, yeah, <laughs> left, right, you know, right, right. I'm like, there's a slide or two, but I, I really just want to illustrate some concepts or some things that we're learning or hearing from customers, which is what we do a lot internally. And sometimes it's good just to hear someone talk through it because there are some nuances there that, that help with sharing that information. And sometimes it's just a pain in the ass to write it all out. It's just like, let, you know, for five minutes, let me just talk through. I'm going to read from my notes and it's a little bit informal, which I think is an advantage too. And I wanted to ask you about that with, with the C-suite messaging. I've done a lot of about us videos or like the CEO's quarterly statements and, and they're all very buttoned up. They're sitting in a chair and we've got two cameras and they do 10 takes. And sometimes it just feels very rigid. Mm. And, and it's like, if this is an internal message and it is private, it can be a little bit more informal and more conversational in nature. What, what are your thoughts between like the, the audio format and some of its advantages for some, some of that internal communication? Yeah, I, absolutely. I mean, I think that there are a lot of people that are scared of the camera, right? And so it's just a non-starter for, for anyone to, to get on the camera and talk about something, um, they know it can be edited later, but, but they kind of, you know, whatever are sensitive and get embarrassed about, uh, seeing themselves, you know, mess, mess something up on camera. Yeah. Whereas audio, you know, if we turned our cameras off right now, I think you and I would both feel really different about how we're talking and, and, and yeah. you know, we're both kind of like, you know, seasoned podcasters. So just even yeah. there, I think that there's like this thing you have to acknowledge about when the camera is on and you see that green dot, you get a little tense and, and you might act a little different. Um, and I agree. I mean, I am very casual talking with our team. Um, and I know Matt from our team that has the internal podcast for our Academy members. He just flips the mic on, doesn't edit it. It's five minutes and it's really raw and, and casual. Um, and that's, that's how it should be. I think, right. I mean, it, it is, right. it is, you know, we use the word intimate a lot with podcasting, um, yeah. and not in a weird way, but, but just in a, yeah. I am talking to you um kind of way and, and and i think that private podcasting even for teams can be really informal can be really intimate uh and and can create this connection then i think that's i think that's why we've seen a lot of interest in this is i mean there are companies that never wanted to be remote that that covid made them be um mm -hmm. and and now <laughs> the interesting thing we're seeing is these companies are saying hey okay time to come back into the office like you know play day is done and the employees are saying nope like I'm not coming yeah. back into the office, you know, F you, um, yep. I'm either going to quit or you're going to let me work remotely. And I mean, you're already seeing like, Oh, Google saying, Oh, okay. You know, two days a week, like you can, you can commute. Right. And so per and personally, I think that like the flex model makes it even more important to have your communication buttoned up. Right. Because then there's like Bob's in the office on Tuesday, but not on Friday. And so we have to have this thing and like, I, I don't see flex as solving the communication efficiency issues that the companies believe exist with remote teams. Uh, I, I honestly think it makes them worse. Um, and so the, the reason that people are coming and looking for a solution like private podcasting for their teams, uh, I, I think will either continue to be the same or be exacerbated and enhanced 
with people seeing that like the flex option is is actually just a lot more logistics to manage than everybody being remote and you know they're always remote and there's never this concern of like who's in the office today or when can we have the development meeting and all those kind of things yeah i agree with that i, I saw that firsthand i mean we had an office ourselves uh in richmond virginia just a little south of dc everyone was in one place and and then much probably a year before COVID, actually we went totally virtual it's just worked out tremendously i mean because we have a distributed workforce anyway we're all over the world and you know with with the way we communicate like you said it, someone might be working really late at night they just had something to do during the day but they're going to get a couple hours in at night it's it's you know they have more freedom at that point in time maybe they have kids and they're in bed i mean that's when i work a lot of times mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know my kids are sleeping and i'm like this is really my two to three hours to <laughs> sit down and get something done yeah and it would be nice to hear some of that information where you know you don't have to be on a zoom call at a you know everyone in, in one place so yeah yeah it'll be interesting to see how this evolves as well and and craig what are you seeing with some you mentioned new use cases are, are coming about very frequently as you roll this out what are some of the the challenges that you do see with people where you know when they introduce this internal podcasting format what are some of the things that they do struggle with that you've seen early on yeah i think that some of the considerations just in general uh you know one is like privacy right um mm -hmm. you know who from a company, say like, say it's a company uh, employ that has a podcast to their employees, um, who really has access to this? How do we know it's secure? How do we know that, you know, Bob can't go share the private feed on Reddit? Um, and and so that is like question number one, right, from companies. Um, question, question number two generally is like, hey, I don't want to, like, I have a membership site, right? And I have hundreds of people signing up and canceling every month. I don't want to manage all this like in a dashboard. How can I automate it all, right? And so like something like our Zapier integration or, mm -hmm. or some of the direct integrations we have to, to just automate this. Because like what we see is regardless of the use case, people don't want to have to think about it, right? They want to say like, I'm going to create the content and that's the, the, the most valuable thing that I can do. I don't want right. to worry about who has access and who doesn't. And did they sign up and did they cancel? Did this person leave the company? So they want to be able to plug in their tool into Castos to, to just manage all that automatically. Um, and, and then I think that that obviously the question for a lot of people is like, is this working? Is this successful? What does successful mean? What does it look like? Um, and, and I think the answer to that is different for everybody. Um, and we say, if you are getting engagement with your teams, you know, on the company application, if you're getting engagement from your team and there's discussion happening about a podcast episode in Slack or at the water cooler or whatever, then it's successful um, because you wouldn't get that otherwise. Right. And so, yeah. so if you're getting that, then it's successful. And to the degree to which it's successful is, you know, analytics and measuring and all that kind of stuff. And, and I think you can drive yourself crazy with, with the analytics and, and, and really measuring these things. But for me, the subjective um, qualitative, stuff is much more valuable than than like what the numbers say is like hey are people talking about this do people feel tuned in to what's going on because we talked about it on the podcast and we don't have to hash it out in a meeting um where that 60 minute block is super valuable if i take the 10 minutes and people can consume that content anytime over the couple of days preceding a meeting you know where we all ready to to rock and roll when that meeting happens um so those are some of the things that like we're chatting with customers about and they're coming to us and saying like hey this is great. I'm interested, but I'm concerned about this, or I want to make sure of that. Uh, those are those are some of the things that 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 we're looking at. Okay. And Craig, when these are set up on the internal side, how does the the feed feel? Like, I mean, I think most people are probably familiar with what a podcast looks like externally. You know, a public facing feed. Do you find that companies are rolling out individual podcasts? for divisions, like you said, when they're starting, or do they put everything in one feed? Like how are people organizing that right now? Yeah, absolutely. It's, it's definitely segmented. Um, th there could be a catch all podcast where, you know, that kind of C-suite leadership messaging stuff happens, but okay. then like the sales team has a podcast and the, you know, HR group has a podcast and marketing has a podcast product education, maybe. Um, yeah. And from, I mean, I think you're also kind of asking about like, what does it look like to a listener, you know, or to an employee? Um, yeah. Like with our system, we we're big on choices, right? So, so we give 
the, the, you know, the company or the account owner in this case, the choice like, hey, do you want to distribute this via a private feed URL? And in that case, the customer or the listener, when they're added to the private podcast, gets an email from us on the customer's behalf. Hey, welcome to Company X podcast. Here's your private feed URL. Click this button to open a list of the you know podcast apps on your phone, depending on you know iOS or Android or whatever, um, and then paste in this feed URL and you're subscribed. Or we have our own mobile app, right? So the Castos mobile app, you download the app, iOS or Android, enter your email address, you get a confirmation in your email, click the button, you get logged in and you get all of your content automatically. And that's really just a decision of like, do you want people to listen to your your private podcast in Overcast where they listen to all their other shows, right? And so that mm-hmm. drives adoption a little bit. But admittedly, like we do a lot to provide safeguards around someone sharing a private feed or that getting public and accessed in many different places and things like that. But But it's still, there's no way around it, right? Like someone could share that feed with someone outside the company with, and so like, the, the, the app like is super secure, right? The files are streamed only, they're not downloaded. So someone can't go and share mm-hmm. it and email it to someone else. We do that really intentionally. Um, and just the security of the whole thing is a little tighter, but then it also is like another thing, right? And so if you're a company with a really kind of tight mobile device management policy to where you can push this app to your employees, then like adoption is really high. But, but if you're a team of 13 and asking people to download it and all this kind of stuff, then it's kind of another barrier to, yeah. to adoption. But, but we have customers that feel very, very, very strongly uh, one way or the other. And so we just give them the choice of how they want to distribute it. Got it. And Craig, as you've rolled out private podcasting and I've introduced new features around this, what's been the biggest surprise, uh, maybe from feedback that you've received from customers so far? Yeah, the biggest surprise is in the the different ways that people want to use this technology. Um, and, and specifically, the biggest surprise was we had a uh, like a mental health professional in the UK that mm-hmm. wants to have a private podcast for each of their patients. Um, and I mean that <laughs> that just gets into a whole thing of HIPAA yeah. and and all this that like Goodness, we're not yeah. ready for. But um, but that's just like you think about it, right? It's like yeah, sure. It makes sense. Right. Like telemedicine is definitely a thing. Why can't, you know, a, a mental health practitioner share an update with a patient? Um, yeah. And then I think the, the big question from there, and this is something that we're looking at maybe for later this year is then why can't the patient share that information back with the health professional? Right. Or, you know, we have a private podcast with our employees and an employee wants to share something back with me via podcast. Mm. That's interesting. Almost a dialogue, like an asynchronous dialogue. Yeah. Yeah. So, so I think that's really, uh, you know, like maybe where this goes to the next level and, and, Mm -hmm. you know, we were talking about what is a podcast, then it's really not a podcast anymore, maybe, but, but, but is super useful in certain, in certain circumstances and for certain applications. Yeah, man, that sounds interesting. And and I wanted to, to shift a little bit, Craig, to, to your own podcast. You mentioned the audience earlier. And, and I was curious as a technology company, like what's the biggest benefit for you having the audience as as a content marketing piece and and really just, you know, as part of your overall marketing mix? Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, it really, um, so, so we're hiring for a few different roles right now and and the, the, the place that the podcast comes in and we talk to to like customers and, and prospects about this all the time is the podcast. And you can appreciate this is like your digital resume, right? Hey, you want to know if I'm the right person to work with, or you would like working with me, check out my podcast. I have 85 episodes talking about what I think about this, this topic and and how I, how I act and and who we are and everything. And, and so I send that to people who apply for, for roles with us now. So they apply for jobs with us. And so we do, you know, the whole kind of, you know, screening and interviewing and, but, but at some point I send them, I say, Hey, here's my personal podcast and here's our audience podcast take a look and listen to both of these to see if you think that we are the kind of person you want to work with. Um, yeah. and, and that is the ultimate like way to get to know somebody again, like asynchronous, the audio first on demand, um, to where they can say yep or no. Right. And then that saves everybody a whole bunch of, of heartache, uh, potentially down the road. Yeah. I love it. I had someone on the podcast last week and, and she mentioned that a podcast is a great way to, let prospects and customers know how I think before 
we work together. Yeah. And I think this is like a, another nuance to that, right? It's, it's, this allows you to explain like your mission values and methodology before employees come to work for you at Castos. So yeah, a couple different ways to, to look at that. And, and with the, um, the, the podcast, like how does, you touched on this a little earlier, but the private podcasting piece, is it mostly your messages coming through? Would you men- mention Matt has some information as well that he shares or is that with customers? How does that work? Yeah. So for our podcast, it's, it's currently just me, me talking. Uh, okay. and you know, again, like you, you can relate where we're, you know, small company to where, um, I think when we get to 25 people or something like where there's like proper, you know, directors of several different, you know, groups within the company that they would have their own messages. And then that's cool. But, but for now we're pretty flat in that respect. Um, Matt has a private podcast just for our Academy members and that's a few hundred people, um, where he shares like really informal, um, but, but really time sensitive often updates about, about what's going on with the product and the platform and the industry. All right. Great. And Craig, with, with the audience from an external viewpoint, how do you, I always love asking this, how, how do you know it's working for Castos? Yeah, I've, I've not thought of this until now, but, but it's the same thing, right? It's like engagement. Um, and, and like, do we get people coming in and saying, Hey, I heard about you all on the audience podcast and I didn't even know that it was Castos that did it. <laughs> uh, and then yeah. I, you know, wanted to start a podcast and I chose, I chose Castos as the hosting platform. Um, like we just need to hear that every once in a while to know that it's working um, from, from an external perspective. And then I think, and I'm sure you've seen this from a internal perspective for Matt and I, we have had conversations with people in the podcasting space that we never, ever, ever would have been able to get on the phone. Um, yeah. But you invite them onto the podcast and it's a, it's, it's, the best networking opportunity out there. Um, and, and it's not a huge secret anymore, um, but but it 100% still works. And so I think for folks, you know, I was I was chatting with someone the other day, they're venture capitalists, moved from, you know, city A to city B, mm-hmm. wanted to get into the VC kind of scene in city B and started interviewing everyone there and got a job, managing a partner now at this firm, blah, blah, blah just because they yeah. started a podcast. Um, and, and started inter- interviewing people there. So, I mean, it's just like the number of stories about like, hey, because of my podcast, I was able to do X. A lot of those have to do with networking and the people that you meet. Yeah, that's awesome. Love that. And, and for you personally, because I actually, the first time I think I ever heard you on podcasts was with uh, Startups for the Rest of Us, which is mm. one of my, my favorite podcasts. I just love hearing those scrappy stories where yeah. you know, people are trying to figure things out, product yeah. market fit, how to grow. Um, so for you personally, like what, what's one of the biggest benefits of, of podcasting that you've seen? Yeah. I mean, this whole business, uh, is just because of podcasting, right? I mean, like I started a podcast quickly saw like, oh, this whole thing about like editing and everything is, is a pain. I bet there are people that would pay us for it. And that's what podcast motor came out of. Um, that was the rogues startups. Well, yeah. Rogue startups. Okay. And that's still yeah. going. Dave and I are at 250 something episodes at this point. Okay. Yeah. Um, so, so that was podcast motor from there. One of our podcast motor customers introduced me to the guy that we bought the plugin from, mm-hmm. um, and then, you know, bought the plugin in the hosting space. And so just, I mean, I, I think that many, many people are in business because they know the, the industry and they know the topic that they're in business on. And, and for us, that's definitely the case. And, and I can't imagine, you know, doing a software product in an industry that I didn't know really deeply. Um, and so fortunate that, that that's pos- podcasting for us. Love it. And Craig, you, you, uh, final question here for you, but you, you, uh, alluded to something earlier as far as like that dialogue piece, the private podcast, but I was wondering with the, the Castos platform, like what's something that, um, is he, you know, that, that you're looking forward to, to releasing or that you're working on that that's really exciting right now that people can look forward to. Yeah. Yeah. I think that, I think that the, the replies is, is a big one, you know, for audience members to be able to participate in com- in a, a conversation, it's a big one. And realistically, that's kind of like end of the year, probably before we're ready with that. But before that will be the ability for our customers to charge money for their content. 
um, right on the platform, right? And mm -hmm. so, um, you know, private podcasting right now needs to integrate with a membership tool or a type form or Zapier API or whatever. And we're building all that in the platform to where you can say, go to, you know, uh, you know, myshow.castles.com slash premium, right? Mm -hmm. Put your email address in, sign up. It's 10 bucks a month to get the awesome content that I don't put out publicly. Um, and, and that is definitely coming in the next couple months. Um, and, and you know, that's been an interesting thing for us as a business. Um, Apple announced this with Apple subscriptions. Um, yeah. Spotify will be doing this too. And, and so, you know, just like, frankly, that, that kind of was like, oh man, like <laughs> those are two huge companies to go up against. Um, yeah. but, but it, it is a really segmented thing, right? Like Apple is obviously just Apple and depending on where you are, that's like way less than half of the market. Mm -hmm. Um, Spotify, you have to publish your podcast on anchor for it to go to Spotify to do this private, like paid. So, so like, um, I still think even if you did both of those, you would want to have the ability for people that don't use either of those platforms to, to get their, their paid content. And, and then there's a big old huge group of people that say like, I don't want to give Apple 30%, you know, I don't want to yeah, it's, it's like a big chunk over there. Yeah. Yeah. I don't want to, I don't want to be beholden to the whims of, of this trillion dollar company. Um, I want to know who my customers are. I want to have control over how they purchase and, and what that looks like. Um, or like we do now, I already have this huge membership site over here, or I have this email list where when someone makes a purchase on Shopify, it goes into MailChimp and it gets applied with this tag. Like, why can't I just hook that up to, to, to cast us for a private podcast for my e-commerce store? Um, yeah. So yeah, I mean, we're really excited about the, the payments product. Um, and I think it will, it will fill a need for a certain type of customer. Um, and it'll be interesting to see how it goes. You know, I, I'm optimistic and skeptical at the same time. Um, and, and yeah. I am just because I know that like making money directly from your content is such a hard thing, right? Like there's yep. so much great content out there right now. And I think there will be some people who can make it work, right? Um, but, but I think that there are going to be a lot of people who think they can make it work and, and don't. And I bet if you looked at the data from Substack, it's the same thing as there's a whole bunch of people that make $10 a month. Um, right. and then and, you have these outliers that everybody gravitates towards, but it's that, that's not the norm. Right? Yeah. Yeah. And it's yeah. going to be, it's going to be the way long tail of it. Um, yeah, but, but that like that with our mobile app and private podcasting, all like there's all this really interesting interaction that will happen. Uh, and, and it's just, it, you know, it's all fitting together and that's one piece of it. All right. Well, exciting stuff, Craig. I, I appreciate your your time here. And I'll, I'll ask where can people go to find out more about yourself and, and Castos? Yeah. So castos.com is the place to, to check out about, about us. Uh, and, and actually the best place to connect with me may be on LinkedIn. Uh, so just search me, Craig Hewitt, on LinkedIn. Um, I am not a big Twitter person, uh, and I blog way less frequently than I should. So yeah, LinkedIn is probably the best place. All right. Awesome. Yeah, I need to get connected with you there. I, I noticed that this morning we weren't connected. So you'll you'll get a, uh, a spammy DM <laughs> connection <laughs> request from me. But uh, well, awesome, Craig. Th this was uh, a lot of fun. You know, thanks for your time. I appreciate you uh, joining me here on Recorded Content. Awesome. Pleasure. Thank you.